And so you also talk about putting your home in autopilot before baby arrives. So what is this and what are the steps that our listeners can do the same? Yeah. So I love to teach about putting your home on autopilot. So that would fall under the preparing your space uh, pillar. And it's often not thought about, you know, if you looked at what you would do before you have a baby or just what you do on a a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, we do so much. And that's just taking care of ourselves and our, our, our husbands, our partners, and our home. And you add a baby into that mix and you have to let go of a lot of that stuff. And so rather than waiting until the baby is born and you're like stuck thinking like, oh my God, I haven't done this or that for the house. You know, I teach moms to put their homes on autopilot, which means you're doing the minimal things so that you can focus on recovery after birth. You can focus on bonding with your baby and your partner and not worry about these other things. And so what is it? So that's um, just one thing about the space and how you can start to do that is, first of all, if you're married and you have a partner, um, this requires some participation. <laughs> it's not just going to be you because, or whoever it is that you you live with, maybe you have, ooh, I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe you have family living with you as well. You know, they could be part of this preparation. And so I'll, t- I'll quickly take you through the steps I take Um, or the steps I teach, which is to first have a conversation with your partner about how things are going to change in the household, the roles, the dynamic and the changes, you know, who does what basically currently and how that might change after the baby arrives. So designating and assigning the different roles you're going to take once the baby is born And then take an inventory of all the things you both do or whoever else is going to be involved on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So you can have a running list for like a week and think of everything you may be doing. And now once you have your list, you'll want to go through it and see what you can take off your plate or what you can assign to somebody else. So if you don't really, if it's not urgent or necessary, or if it's something that can be put off for a few months until you're out of the postpartum season, you know, take it off your list. And then once you've done that, you would want to automate whatever you can on that list. So a, a good thing to automate is paying for bills. You can put things on auto pay, which I don't necessarily like to do normally, um, but I, I'll do it for like three months just so it's one less thing I have to worry about is like paying bills and automate maybe groceries or something that could be on subscription delivered to your home and like household items, that kind of thing. So that is the next step is automation. And then the last step would be to delegate. So whatever's le- left on the list that you didn't delete, you haven't automated, um, you can um, delegate to either your partner or hire somebody to do whatever it is, cleaning the house or walking the dogs if you have dogs. You know, just anything you can take off your plate even more so that your list is either, you know, nothing's on your plate to do when the baby is born, or you'll have just a few things to do. And so that's how you can automate ahead of time and not have to worry about these things when the baby arrives. That's great. Yeah. I mean, prepping ahead of time like that is, sounds so good because it's, you know, instead of waiting until after the baby's born, there's going to be so many things that come up that you're not necessarily planning for or expecting. So that's a great tip. 